I've updated my pause menu common UI project to support enhanced input so that our common UI action widgets and navigation can read directly from input actions. So in this case, the interact reads directly from the input actions context mapping and the same for the gamepad. And also it reads the action from the action description. Um, so I haven't changed much of the functionality, uh, just cleaned it a little bit. Like the back button style updates nicely now between mouse and keyboard. Um, and also the, the tab button still works as intended. This essentially removes the intermediate step of having to define UI actions inside a data table and specify which key it is and having to change the key every time we decide to change which key is bound to interact, sort slash, or whatever action you have in your game. Toggling on enhanced input support for common UI is really nice because if ever I want to change the key mappings, the UI will update accordingly. So for example, if I update my interact input action to be a different key, so in this case, I'll just choose Q. And then for the, for the gamepad, I'm just going to choose the game face button left. And you'll notice that the action widget now shows Q and then X for interact. It's really nice for contextual actions and just having that automatically update based on what the input action is set to or is bound to in an input mapping context. As a heads up, I'd like to say that this setup is marked as an experimental feature. And I had a lot of trouble finding if any information about common UI with enhanced input, which is kind of why I really wanted to dig in and to be able to just provide a simple, really bare bone project that has it set up. Um, so I'm very thankful for this document and I will share in the video's description. The note does mention as of Unreal 5.2, enhanced input support has not been tested as thoroughly as other features and they do not recommend shipping titles with this feature at this time, um, but I'm finding it incredibly useful. Actually, as of today, we are now at 5.4, um, so it will be interesting how Epic handles common UI with enhanced inputs in the upcoming future. But in the meantime, it's awesome to get to play with it and see how great it is already. You can go ahead and navigate to my GitHub repo for uh, the pause menu. And I've put this enhanced input under another branch. Um, I'll provide this specific link here. Uh, I've decided to keep them separate just for the sake that once you enable enhance input, it's a thing of its own and it does not collaborate well with the previous way of handling uh, common UI input brushes and all that. Um, so I will keep them separated. The main branch is using 5.2 and this one is using 5.3. I just finished this project. By this time, 5.4 has rolled out already. So hopefully it's it's an easy upgrade from 5.3 to 5.4. Uh, but what you can do is you can go ahead and just go to the code button and just download the zip. Or you can also open with GitHub desktop and then go ahead and unzip the project and open up the new project. If you haven't watched my common UI pause menu video yet, I go over setting up common UI itself. Um, and I also have a, a video about the tab list view setup. Um, so yeah, you can go ahead and click those videos. I, I went ahead and just changed back the interact mappings. So if you follow also um, the document uh, from Epic, the first step I had to do was go to project settings. So edit project settings. And then in the common input settings, I just turned on enable enhance input support. And then it immediately required a restart. Um, so I restarted my project. And then I noticed that pretty much all the input navigation, it was really busted. Because it's as soon as you enable this, it's always expecting an input action 
for for everything really so still in the project settings in the common input settings you'll notice that you have your input data that we set up in the previous video uh, but now it also has a enhance input click action and back action so the first thing i did was essentially create a bunch of input actions and input mapping context so that i could use those to fill in all of the, the missing variables um, to be able to get that information from the input actions directly. And I essentially just deleted all my data table for uh, the previous click and back actions. Like the documentation tutorial mentions, I created an input mapping context for generic UI actions and just added the accept back and tap next and previous um, so that I could swap those in. And then just like any other games that has enhanced input, I just have an input mapping context for default actions, uh, like uh, opening up the journal. So just the tab list that I have, um, interacting, which is, it doesn't do much. It just prints a message on the screen, uh, but it's an example of what kind of contextual actions you could have. And at least now I could use the escape and open journal to sort of clean up uh, the flow that I used to have in the player controller so that now the player controller, it just uses an input action instead of directly using the keys right over here. And an interesting bit that I still don't really fully understand is that in the tutorial it mentions to add a player mappable key setting and to add a metadata uh, that will that has this information for being a generic input action so i i call to any ui engineer here uh, who understands this bit a little better i i think it's something to do with not having too much complexity or not listening to a bunch of different actions in the UI uh, for triggered, ongoing, canceled, and completed. But my initial thought was that this would make it so you can't listen to them as a normal input action. But I was wrong because if I added that to the player, player controller, in game it still triggered those actions. But yeah, I just applied that that metadata to all of these four input actions. Um, the default actions don't have those. Once I set up all the input mapping context and input actions, I just made sure to add the mapping context to the player itself. Um, so on begin play, I add these two mapping context so that we know that these keys are bound to these actions. And this again, it, it was interesting to try to figure out if I should add these input mapping context whenever UI is activated, um, but I opted to put it somewhere with the generic input mapping context, as the article says, to uh, keep it more organized so I don't have to add this uh, to every single UI that I have. But yeah, this step is really important or else your input action won't be bound to anything. So now the player has all these input actions that they can input. Um, so now it was ready to be bound to the UI. The generic click and back action, uh, I added them over here. And that fixed a lot of the issues I had. It was nice because the, the buttons immediately got the generic accept button for uh, whenever navigating with the gamepad. So the last missing piece was the tab list view. Adding the input actions to the enhance input click action in your common input data, it essentially made sure that uh, my accept actions were working and the back action key was working, and it was showing up in the UI as part of the button and as part of the back button, especially when I am using my gamepad. An interesting part uh, where I had some issue is that the back button for the keyboard and mouse wasn't showing up uh, because it was expecting some sort of key that is part of the keyboard and mouse domain or input type. 
So I added the escape key exact exactly for that reason. Even though you just have to click on it to uh, to go back. The next thing I had to change or update was the tab list. So I'm just going to search for tab and horizontal tab list. So in the tab list, uh, what usually used to be driving which key was the next and previous was these here. But now that we have enabled enhance input, uh, we need to fill these two fields here. Uh, so those are just the generic tab next and tab previous actions that we added to our mapping. And then it updated where um, where the tab was working on the on the gamepad and on the keyboard. And yeah, and everything was really nice. Along the way, I had a few stumbles. Uh, like I had added the input action to the menu button and then that had caused uh, whenever I was using gamepad it would just show the input action on every single button so those ones I just had to make sure to just keep that one clear and just trust uh, the setup that the input action will will show up uh, whenever the button is selected Another change I did for this update is that I just enabled to show the text of the button on the menu. So it doesn't just say button anymore. And the input settings that I had for each button uh, were essentially just these three over here. And another change that I made in both my pause menu button and other widgets is that I have set up the desired input config uh, to just be menu. And now that I hover over it, there's an interesting bit about when all the widgets are deactivated, that common UI will not attempt to automatically restore the input config, uh, which is interesting because I do have a remaining issue uh, that whenever I quit on the gamepad, I lose control sight of my mouse and I sort of have to fiddle around, right click to see it again. Again, if anyone has a solution to that bit, please share. Um, if, I, if I quit with mouse and keyboard, everything is fine. As a side note, if ever you decide to choose another key for your keyboard in actions and the brush is not showing up, you might have to just add a brush to your keyboard and mouse uh, common UI input control data, um, so which is located under uh, this path. I just added the the E and the Q because I was I was using those for examples. Um, I just made these brushes in uh, Affinity Designer, uh, but you could do them really in any software of your own choice. This is essentially what uh, the input action tries to fetch, just to see if there's any brush that's bound to the key that it's looking for. Uh, so this is where the magic happens. Another thing I added to this project is just an example of using an action widget that is not inside a bound button or anything that already handles getting that input action information. Uh, so in this case, I just I just put it inside directly inside our default HUD layout. Um, so hopefully in your project, it will be some more modular way, uh, but this is just a, a nice way to show that it's just bound to the input action interact. Um, so if I go into my action widget, it's just a horizontal box uh, with an input action widget um, and just a, a text name. And the only functionality I added is to update the button text and refresh the button text. Uh, and another thing I did is whenever it pre-constructs, it checks to see if that variable is valid. Then it sets the enhanced input action. Uh, because without this variable that I created, I couldn't get information on the input action widget and that is probably because I didn't make it public. Um, so probably you could do without the input action. Um, 
variable that I added and just make this one public. And then hopefully that would mean that you would be able to set it over here. But that is how I set it up. And yeah, just a, just an example of it working in, in a HUD. I've tested it in a standalone project as well. Um, so everything seems to be working as intended, which is great. Thank you very much, all the useful comments for the common UI that helped me fix some um, issues that were happening with standalone or package game. I'm finding toggling on the enhance input support to be really useful, and especially for uh, giving the player some contextual data of what actions they can perform, uh, what key they need to, to press. Uh, so let's say you are swimming and you want to show it to your player that they can dive. Uh, then it's easy to just show it. And then if ever you iterate on what key you want to trigger that action, it immediately updates without having you update the database of input actions. I'm hoping common UI and enhance input support is ironed out in the future. Uh, but for now, I hope that this bare bone test project helps you as much as it helped me understand how to enable this in my own uh, Lyra based project, uh, but outside of Lyra. As always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.